OBS has so many cool features and some of them are rarely used but can be a game changer for certain streamers. Studio mode is just one of those features. If you've never seen it or checked it out and played with it but you don't really know how it works, today I'm going to demystify studio mode and show you exactly what you can do with this cool tool. It's actually pretty powerful and I think you're going to like it. Hello my YouTube friends! Now not everyone will want to use studio mode, but there are some really cool things you can do with it. It just makes sense that you know everything you can do with it because it is possible it could transform your stream. So you know what? Let's get to it! Okay. So to access studio mode, what we're going to do is go over here on the right and we're going to select studio mode. So that brings up these two windows here with this transition piece here. And this window is a little too zoomed in, so let's zoom it out so we can see the whole thing. This right here under program is the segment that's going out to the live streaming audience. And this over here under preview is the segment that allows you to create on the fly, which is what makes studio mode really cool. So let me show you what I mean. Program is what is being seen by the live audience right now. I can select any scene that I want and you can see it changes our preview. So that means I can change and modify anything in the preview window and it's not being seen by the live audience. So let's see, we have this uh, little logo here. So I can take it out or add it in anytime I want on the preview screen. Now there's also something here that we're not seeing because it's part of the source switcher, which is fine. You're gonna find that some of the scenes will have media sources. Those media sources don't immediately start, but you can go ahead and start them if you'd like right here so you can see what they are. Uh, this is another example right here. If I select here, I can see what the media source is. And there we go. So just in case you're wondering why this is black, it's because there's a media source behind it that's not playing, mostly just because it's trying not to overwhelm the computer while it's trying to stream. So let me show you how you transition the preview window into the main live stream. Basically, all you have to do is click this transition button and boom, now this scene is live and this scene is waiting. So now I can select whatever scene I want. And this is really powerful. So let's say that we got donations or something while we're over here on this scene and we want to update a text file that scrolls with our donation names. Well, let's go ahead and click the plus and we're just going to add a text source here and we'll call this names and click OK. And we can read this from a text file, obviously, if we wanted to. But uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to type uh, donation names and you know bob george there we go tim whatever we can add as many names as we want we could click okay and then what i'm going to do you can see those names are listed up here i'm just going to kind of shrink this down a little bit and we'll move it over here and i don't really need it to be really small because i'm going to set this up in a different way i'm going to right click on it go to filters click the plus we're going to go to scroll and we're just going to kind of scroll these names across the bottom here and i messed up the name thing what i want to do here we're going to go into properties and we're going to add some spaces after tim so that that separates the scroll and there we go so now we've got a scroll that we just added to this scene and then we just hit transition and boom We've got an updated donation scroll across the screen with any new donations that were added or new subscribers or whatever we want. And you can see how this could be really powerful, especially if you have a producer in-house that can type this stuff over here and then just flip on the new scene with anything they want. Maybe you're having a situation where somebody in your stream tells you they're having a birthday or whatever. And so what you can do is over here on this, maybe you have a birthday gift, you could go and select let's try an image source i don't have a specific one so we're going to say this logo is a birthday gif and then i'm going to go ahead and transform we're going to do a fit to screen and let's say that that says happy birthday we're just going to pretend here and then you've got a person's name you can easily go in here and select some text 
and his name is Frank, maybe. So you've got a gift that says happy birthday, and you've got a little thingy here that says the person's name. You can just easily put this in here while you're live streaming, hit the transition button, and bada bing, now you've got happy birthday Frank right on the screen because the person said, today's my birthday. This is how you can easily interact with your audience, and they'll be like, wow, how did he do that on the fly? Well, if you have an in-house producer, it's really easy, but even if you don't, if you have these text files already in each scene and you just have to update them and modify them, it's pretty easy to do that while you're live streaming. It's actually not as difficult as you would think. Now you can change the transitions for any scene that you want. Okay, so let me show you how transitions work. Basically, you have this transition bar right here. You can just use the standard transition by clicking transition. But you can also go down here and select from quick transitions that you created. So if I click hex sting, there we go. Or I can just select the standard fade right here, but we can also click the plus under quick transitions and add any other transition we want. So if we wanna do the move transition, we can select that and you can see it adds it right here and boom, there's the move transition. What else do we have? We can do the final sting transition, boom, and there we go. So. We have all kinds of transitions that we can use, which, man, it makes it really fun to do this. <laughs> I like it. You can literally have five or 10 different transitions that you use for this. So you can just stack them all up and change to different transitions all the time. I think it makes it a lot easier than standard where you have to basically select each transition for each different one. Here, I can be creative. I can select different transitions anytime I want. You can definitely see how studio mode would be something that would be really, really effective with an in-house producer. It can be done without an in-house producer, but it's probably a little more difficult for the right streamer studio mode can be an absolute game changer because it allows you to interact with your audience in real time and i think you know anytime you can do that it's a good thing likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience so take a second down below and let me know how i'm doing and while you're there please subscribe if you're not already it really does help me continue to make content that helps you so thanks i think studio mode can be really awesome especially if you have an on-site producer for your show. They can easily add text and graphics to scenes that are relevant to the discussion that you're having on the fly and make changes to scenes and all that kind of stuff to make the show a lot more dynamic. If you wanna see the three best new plugins out there for OBS, you should check this video out. Big thanks to all the sponsors that support the channel. You'll find their links below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.